Okay, welcome back. We're going to draw some more Lewis structures here and talk more about shape, bond angle, and polarity. Hopefully this isn't too bad for you. You guys should be really, really good at drawing Lewis structures right now. We're going to start by drawing the Lewis structure today for the carbonate ion. Now carbonate is CO3 two negative. So it's a polyatomic ion. That means it's an ion made up of more than one atom. In this case, we have a carbon and three oxygens. So let's figure out our valence electrons. Carbon has four. Each oxygen has six valence electrons. And we're going to add two to the total because it's two negative. That means we've gained two electrons. Electrons carry a negative charge. And so if the overall charge is two negative, that means we have to add two valence to our total. So we have 4 plus 18 is 22, and 2 more is 24 valence. So, I'm going to jump right to the chase here. I know we're going to need a double bond. So I'm going to put my carbon in the center, and I'll double bond an oxygen over here. We'll have a single bond to the other two oxygens. Now this oxygen only needs two more pair. This one needs three more pair, doesn't it, to, to complete its octet. And this one needs three more pair. And carbon's okay, because it has two, four, six, eight around it. Let's see how many valence electrons we've used. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four. And that's exactly what we're allowed. Now I'm going to put brackets around this to show the reader, you, that it's a two negative ion. We've had to add two electrons to get that structure. Now, in reality, this is not one double bond and two single bonds. That double bond is shared equally between all three oxygens. So to complete this Lewis structure, I should show resonance, which means I need to show the double bond in the other two positions. So I'm going to draw a double bond to the oxygen below now, and we'll single bond these other two, and we'll complete the octets of the oxygens, just like we did before. And that one right there. We'll put brackets around that and call it two negative. And then one more. These are all equally correct Lewis structures. We'll put the double bonded oxygen to the left way over there. And single bond these other ones and complete their octets. And we'll put brackets around that and call it two negative. So this would be the appropriate Lewis structure for the carbonate ion. Do you all see that? You have the double bond shared equally in all three positions. So it's not one double and two singles, it's actually three one and a third bonds because that double bond is shared between three places. Okay. Now if I were to build one of these, I would end up with something like that double and two singles that we would see. That's how we're going to determine shape, bond angle, and polarity. And there's no non-bonding pair sticking up anywhere to push these down. So those are all on the same plane. So the shape for this ion is trigonal planar. Now normally I would say all these dipoles would cancel and it would be a non-polar molecule. But it is an ion so ions, we're going to say, you know, they carry a charge. Um, we're going to call that polar. It has a two negative charge. Okay. And the bond angle? Well, we have three regions of electron density as far away from each other would be 120 degrees. Okay. You like that? All right. Let's do the next one. And once again, as I do these, you can try these on your own just by pausing the video camera, working on it, and then starting it up again and see how you did. You should be doing that to see if you're actually learning these things. So nitrogen is, there are two nitrogen atoms, five valence apiece, so I'm allowed 10 valence. And I'll take my time on this one for you. We'll try a single bond between the nitrogens, even though we, I, I know that's not gonna work. So we'll complete each nitrogen's octet. And it looks pretty. Doesn't it? It looks great. Uh, the problem is we're only allowed 10 valence, and I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, so that ain't going to work. So, you know, you guys will try a double bond maybe next, and then we'll complete the octet for each nitrogen. See how that has 8 around it for at least part of the time? And we'll do the same thing to the other nitrogen. It has 8 around it, and that looks good. 
Let's count up our valence. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We're only allowed 10, so that's not going to work. So we have to step it up to a triple bond. So those nitrogens are sharing three pairs. Now this nitrogen only needs another pair to complete its octet, and so does that one over there. Okay, so we have two nitrogens triply bonded to each other. Now since there are only two atoms, we know the shape has to be linear. We can't have any other shape when there are only two atoms. And the electron density is distributed evenly because these are the same atoms. Remember the Barbie doll greenhouse analogy? All right, if these are identical twins, they're going to share all of those evenly. So there's no uneven distribution of electrons. So we would say that that is nonpolar. Okay, let's look at HCN. One valence for my hydrogen, four valence for my carbon, and five valence for my nitrogen. That gives me ten valence to work with again. Hmm. I'm going to put carbon in the middle. That's the one that actually goes there. Uh, in AP, we'll talk about why carbon's in the center on this particular uh, molecule. But for right now, you don't need to worry about it. Just know that carbon's in the center. And hydrogen can only have a single bond, right? That's all it can have is one pair around it. And I guess I can try to single bond the nitrogen. That would mean I'd have to put three more pairs around it to complete its octet. And two more pairs around the carbon to complete its octet. So I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Once again, that's way too many. So I guess I could try a double bond just for fun. Nitrogen still needs two more pair. Carbon needs one more pair. Right? 2, 4, 6, yeah, needs one more pair. So let's see how many we've used. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We're only allowed 10, so that's not going to work. So we have to step it up to a triple bond again, don't we? I don't mess with the hydrogen bond, because that, that hydrogen bonded to the carbon can only make one bond. And I'll put two electrons on this side of the nitrogen to complete its octet, and carbon's octet is complete. So there it is. That's our Lewis structure for HCN. There are no non-bondings on the center atom. You notice we always look at the center atom to determine shape. So I think that molecule would look something like that with my triple bond. They're holding the carbon and nitrogen. Single bond over here for hydrogen and my lone pair over there. But on the center atom, there's nothing to cause it to be bent. So we're going to treat this triple bond as if it were one region of electron density. And this is one region of electron density. To be as far away from each other as possible, we know that would be a linear arrangement. Now use your spaceship analogy. Is this carbon in the middle going to stay still if we have a spaceship over here and a different one over here? It would probably move, wouldn't it? So that would be polar. Bond angle for linear is 180 degrees. Okay, pretty straightforward for you? Not too bad. So I hope you guys are getting good at this. In class we're going to do a lab where we're going to make some of those ball and stick models and uh, see how you do when you make them yourself, if that helps you learn shape, bond, angle, and polarity. Okay, I do want to introduce to you something called hybridization today. Uh, we probably won't finish the notes today, but I just want to introduce hybridization for you. In order to theoretically justify the Vesper model, some adjustments need to be made in the electron arrangement of bonded atoms. If we consider methane, CH4, remember we drew that Lewis structure, predicted its shape, bond angle, and polarity, we would write the electron configuration and orbital diagram for carbon. Well, let's see. For the carbon atom, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Okay, that's the electron configuration. Now, the orbital diagram is right down here. That's plain old vanilla carbon, at least for the outer electrons. So we have 2s2 and then 2p2. Okay, so looking at that orbital diagram, how many bonds should carbon be able to make? Now keep in mind a covalent bond is sharing a pair. So to share, carbon has to have one, and the atom it's sharing with has to have one. So I can make a bond there, and I can make a bond here. I couldn't there because that orbital's full, and I couldn't here because carbon doesn't have an electron to share. So looking at this orbital diagram for carbon, we would say, well, it can only make two bonds. But we know that's not true. We know carbon can make 
four bonds. We've drawn the Lewis structure for CH4. There is a formula right there, CH4. It is making four. So how do we explain this? Well, the answer is the process known as hybrid orbitals. Hybrid orbitals are orbitals formed by mixing orbitals of different energies. For methane, it goes like this. The first thing that happens is one of these 2s electrons is excited and taken up to the p sublevel. So now we have one in the s and three in the p, and you might think, well, we're done now. It can make four bonds. Yeah, but not in the configuration that we know exists in methane. We know in methane there's a bond angle of 109.5. In this situation, we'd have an s orbital, which is a spherical orbital, and three p orbitals, which are those figure eight orbitals. And it would be very difficult to make four bonds with those orbitals like that, let alone have those bonds be at 109.5. So the theory is that this S and these three P's blend together to form a hybrid orbital. Now a hybrid orbital, when you mix an S and a P together, remember an S is a circle shape, a spherical shape. A P is that peanut or figure eight shape. When you mix those two together, you end up with this type of orbital. And we call that, in this case, an S mixed with three P's, an SP3 orbital. So that's one of the SP3 orbitals, and I have four. Now, those are all sticking out of the carbon atom, and they're as far away from each other as possible. So when that happens, they form this tetrahedron, and each has one electron in it. And of course, those one electrons can bond with the hydrogen atoms and share a pair. And we get our expected shape, our expected bond angle, and our expected polarity. The only way that works, though, is if an S blends together with these three P's to form an SP3 hybrid. We have four SP3s. Let me show you with another molecule. Let's take ammonia under consideration. So ammonia is NH3. So the simple p-orbital model does not account for the observed bond angle of just under 109.5. Now the ending configuration for the nitrogen atom is 2s2, 2p3. Okay, 2s2, 2p3 to end with. So um, what would happen is this s and these three p's blend together and we form four sp3 hybrids. And once again, they all have that type of balloon shape. We call that an sp3 hybrid orbital because it's the blending of an s with three p's and there are four of them. Now once again, those four will be as far away from each other as possible. Now do you notice with ammonia, that orbital cannot make a bond. It already has a pair in it. So it can only make three bonds and that's okay because when hydrogen comes along and shares its electron, it shares one electron with each of those hybrid orbitals. It can only do it three times. That's why the formula is NH3. Okay, so whenever we see four pairs around a central atom, the hybridization is the result of blending an S with three P orbitals together, so we call that SP3. Let me show you this one for water. If we look at the oxygen's, oxygen's configuration, it ends with 2s2, 2p4. Can't see this very well on my drawing, but hopefully in your notes you can see it better. 2s2, and then the 2p4 looks like that. So we have an s that will blend with these three p's. Now that one can't make a bond. This one can't make a bond, but these other two sp3 hybrids can, which is perfect because that's how many bonds oxygen makes with hydrogen. Okay, it's making two bonds, the hydrogen sharing um, its electron with this electron from oxygen and this electron from oxygen. So we end up with H2O. These two over here are hybrid orbitals that are full and they cannot bond. So they're called lone pairs or non-bonding pairs. So that's how we explain the shape and the bond angle for the water molecule. And of course, then we can explain the polarity. Now, there are other types of hybridization besides sp3. You see sp3 when there are four pairs around a central atom. There's also something called sp2 hybridization, and you see that when there are three pairs around a central atom. Okay? All right, 
We'll wrap that up. We'll do SP2, maybe an SP hybridization later. For right now, we'll call it a day. Hope you enjoyed this. Bye-bye.